What I found here is some bad news. I've got a bridge laying in the bottom, and I've got the post that the bridge sits on. It's broken off, and uh, that's a bit of a problem. So it's only been running on two valves on that particular cylinder. So I decided I'd better have a good inspection of the entire valve train. So here I am looking over all the other cylinders. Didn't find any other damage, didn't find any other issues. Um, so I took some pictures, reached out to a couple people in the bus community and uh, got some advice and decided maybe it was just best to have a better look in the morning. Okay, good morning Gus. Yesterday, Gus had a bad day. Um, I don't think it was Gus's fault, but Gus had a bad day. Uh, Gus had been hard, getting harder and harder to start, so decided I was going to remove the valve cover and adjust the valves. Um, and let's pull this cover off. So, we pulled the valve cover off. We were going to adjust the valves. And what we discovered was not very nice at all. So or so we can see. This is a four valve head and the support piece that goes between the valves for the bridge is broken. Here, I'll pull this one off so you can see it. So it normally has a, a, a post like that and then the bridge goes over top of that and then the rocker, I'll show you on this cylinder, the rocker pushes down on the bridge to open the valve. So, um, this is luckily a four valve head, uh, two valves weren't working on that cylinder, two were. Um, what I suspect might have happened was the valves might have been adjusted when it was all carboned up and what we've got is we've got some valves that are tight, some valves that are loose. So if they were adjusted with carbon buildup and then I wrote, drove it, I probably 1500 miles on it now down the highway, burned off all that carbon, well some of the valves might need readjusting, some might be too tight, some might be too loose and that seems to be the case because if I go to this cylinder, okay, I can move that one. That one feels about right. I haven't put a feeler gauge on it, but it, to me it feels about right. This one here, which is on the same cylinder, is so tight, I can't move it at all. Um, so that's not good. So one of two things happened. All the injectors were pulled out because they were stuck. So it, it could have happened that maybe one of these weren't seated quite right, and uh, it got knocked sideways and fell off, broke the stud. But it's also possible that the valves weren't adjusted right. So I've had a good look at the valves. Um, there is one small nick. I mean, if I rotate this, there's one small nick on the hat right there. It's not too bad. I can actually push the valve down. I can rotate it. It feels like it's um, not damaged. Like I can actually push it down and rock it a little bit there. It doesn't feel like it's bent. So I don't think I need to pull the keepers and check it any further. Um, I did notice these are N65 injectors. I had a good look last night in the dark, and I have some N70s, so when, when I pull out the injectors to change them, uh, I'll do a compression test on that cylinder to see how that cylinder is. But for now, I'm just going to try and get that broken bridge out, uh, the, the broken support for the bridge, and then uh, press in a new one. They are press fit, so it's going to be a little bit hard to get out. There is a procedure in the manual to do it. Uh, here, let's check another one here. Um, this one looks like it's pushing down. Okay, that one's really loose. Like, I can actually lift it up and down a little bit. That one feels about right. It's got a little bit of play. So they should, I think the manual says um, 15 or 16 thou, something like that. But I'll go look up in the manual what they're supposed to be and I'll, I'll set them accordingly. Uh, so we're going to set the rest of them up. Um, I could probably still run it if I needed to, if I needed to move it somewhere. Because... It was still driving fine. Uh, I don't think it would hurt it to drive it on two valves on that cylinder. It's just going to be down a little bit of power. Um, might gum up the other valves, but uh, we can deal with that. Um, I don't think I need to move it right now, so we're just going to leave Gus and it is what it is. We got to fix it. So part of owning a vintage bus. Um, that's why you better be hands-on or have a good mechanic nearby. So I found a source for this part. PC Industries uh, Powerline Components, they have these 
guides. They're about five bucks a piece. They actually even sell a six thou oversized. So if you actually damage that to the point you need to drill it out, you can buy an oversized part. Uh, the problem is, is I'm up in Canada and it's going to cost me more money in shipping than the part's worth. So I'd like to try and find somewhere north of the border here I can get this part. Um, the other problem is, is PC Industries has a minimum order value of $25 and these are about five bucks. So I need to find enough other parts to stock up on to make the order worthwhile and pay for the shipping. So um, it does appear they're available brand new, which is great. Uh, I just got to get the old one out and get it back together.